Hello Calc Kids, this is Mr. Bean. Today we're going to talk about how to sketch a slope field. This is pretty cool stuff. What a slope field is, is a slope field is a graph that represents a differential equation. It is the slope of every possible answer to a differential equation, like the original, whatever the original equation was, what y equals. These are all the possible graphs that it would look like. So it shows tiny little hash marks all over the place here that represent the slope at that particular point. So let me, let me give you the example here. We have dy dx equals 2x. So what a slope field does is you could choose any point you want. For example, I could choose negative 1, 1, that point right there. And if I plugged in the point, negative 1, 1, into this differential equation, what would that give me? Plug in the negative 1 there. There's no y value, so it's just the x. That would give you negative 2. And look, what I circled there, that looks like it has a hash mark with a slope of negative 2. So that would be right. And we could figure that out for every single little piece of these. And if I took the antiderivative, just so you know, this would give me, the antiderivative would be y equals, so x squared, 2x squared over 2, so the 2's cancel, and then plus c. So the plus c is the general solution. You remember that? We have our general solution. So this slope field represents any possible c. Now let me show you this on a cool little app. So this thing was used using uh, GeoGebra. GeoGebra, and it's on the website. So if you're on FlipMath, calculus.flipmath.com, underneath our video, if you scroll down, you'll see this thing there. And you can plug in any little uh, differential equation you want here, and it'll show you the slope fields. Pretty cool stuff. So what this is, is I could now take my differential equation of 2x, and I'm going to click this thing here, plot a solution point. This is where you have all the different plus c's. There's an infinite number of them. So I could just go up and down and you see this creates a parabola, which would make sense because we said y equals x squared plus c was our answer. So it's just x squared plus c. So, so any plus c we want, that's what's going on with this thing. And then you can see these little solid hash marks. That's where we have the minimums and all this cool stuff. So that's what we're doing today is figuring out how to graph these little hash marks. You don't have to worry about the exact solution, what I have in green. We will do that in our next lesson. So let's graph one. So this is how we start. Sometimes you can just look at this. If it's x times y, you think, okay, well, if I just choose any random point, like 1, 1, this point right here, 1 times 1 has a slope of 1. So I'm going to have, my, well, as I start to draw this, I actually want to focus in on the slope. I'm going to look at this point and this point as I'm drawing it. So then I know it has a slope of 1, and I'm just kind of putting a hash mark right there that would eventually connect them if I wanted. Okay, so I don't actually circle them. I'm just thinking about that as I'm drawing it myself. So then I get the hash mark with a slope of 1. So, and then you just do this for every single point. Well, what about the easy ones? How would you get a slope of zero? I like to do that because they're easier. A slope of zero would be if x was a zero, all right? So I can go ahead and say, if, if any of the x's are zero, so all the points with x zero, we have a flat hash mark there. And if any of the y's were a zero, right? Because something times zero will give you zero here. So all of these along here with a y value of zero, and I know it's probably hard to see, on your graph because it's right on the axis, so it's hard to tell. But those are all the slopes of zero. So now from here, we just start filling out the rest of this. I'm, I'm going to show you that there's a chart you could make. I'll do that on this one, the second version. But sometimes it's just quick and easy. Ones like this, it's quick and easy to just do it. So like negative 2, comma 2, that's just negative 2 times 2. So negative 4. So now what I do there is I'm eyeing it. I'm starting at this point and I'm going 1, 2, 3, 4 down to here. These do not have to be perfect. Okay, you're just eyeballing it. So I'm going down to there. So I'm making a line that looks like it would have a hash mark of a slope of negative 4. This one here, negative 1 times 2 has a slope of negative 2. 1, 2 would have a slope of positive 2. 2, 2 has a slope of 4. Again, I'm just eyeballing it. So it's a pretty steep slope. Negative 2, 1, slope of negative 2. So you draw your hash mark with a slope of negative 2. Negative 1, positive 1 has a slope of negative 1. Keep going here. 2, 1, slope of 2. And now we're down to the negatives. Negative 2, negative 1 is a positive 2. Negative 1, negative 1 is a positive 1. 1, negative 1, negative 1. 2 times negative 1, negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2, positive 4. Uh, what's that one? Negative 1 times negative 2, positive 2. 1 times negative 2, negative 2. And then 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. So again, eyeballing it way up to that dot up there, negative 4. Okay, so this creates our slope field. Now, what does this do again? This gives us the slope of the original solution of what y equals. It's a, the original graph before you took the derivative. This gives you the slope. And the nice thing is it gives you a little bit of a picture of what's going on. 
your graph here you can hardly tell anything like what the heck what is this graph you can't really see because we don't have very many points and you don't have very many hash marks so let me show you on our little GeoGebra tool if I type in XY and hit enter so you can see here this is larger and it has more hash marks these little dashes so you get a lot better feel for what the graph is doing and I can even manipulate this instead of 13 density I can bring it up and I get more and more hash marks oh that's cool look at that cool so you can get a lot better feel for what's going on with the more hash marks you have on a slope field and then I'm going to plot my solution point and you can see here these are all the different types of graphs that it could be so this again slope field is all of the graphs so it's a general solution not just one particular solution okay uh, I also like to think of this let me get rid of that I like to think of these as like a current on a river if you dropped a little leaf on a, in a, on a river this would be the current and it would kind of push the leaf this way this way this way this way and then it would push it back up that's what I think of these hash marks I like to think of it as the current that pushes it one direction and then so these lines just kind of push it flattens out flattens out pushes it back down the other way all right let's do another one this one you're going to do on your own but before you get started let me help you sometimes it's not as easy to just think of one comma one plug in the values and do it there's a lot to keep track of so a lot of people like to make a chart like this so I'm gonna go x y and then dy dx and so what I do from here is uh, how about I just take this whole column here all the x values are negative one so negative one two negative one one negative one zero uh, negative one negative one negative one negative two uh, okay so now what we can plug in this x and y into this thing the negative one goes here so it's going to be a two plus two slope of four one plus two slope of three okay so this is how it works and then you just keep going here and I, then I would even now start my new column so x is of zero zero two zero one so keep filling this out and then uh, in fact I want you to go ahead and pause the video now pause this oh negative one negative two so pause the video try this one on your own and let's see how well your hash marks match up to mine here I have my answers for my slope fields I noticed that I had put the wrong numbers here some of you probably caught that so I got this fixed and the here's the thing when you graph these like let's be real negative six negative five negative four trying to graph a little hash mark of that slope that's crazy you're not gonna be able to be exact accurate on that okay so it's just kind of an eyeball thing obviously it would be very steep uh, and then you want to be able to make sure your slopes are for the zeros are accurate and let's take a look at what this graph is so if I plug in what was it y minus 2x yeah that's right so this is kind of cool you get a lot better feel for what this graph looks like if you were to just plot a point somewhere you'd see the current take it up 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 and then turn around and come back down so let me show you what this looks like so this is the graph so it could be going up here these are all the possible different graphs that you'd have but notice every place where you have a horizontal line uh oh I have too many hash marks here let's go back to I like 13 13 gives me a hash mark right on the little half marks and on the coordinate points so you can see I'm gonna make it match up right there boom see that you've got the maximum right there where there's a horizontal hash mark for your slope field and that's so all of those represent maximums all across there okay again this lesson you don't have to sketch any type of solution graphs we'll do that in our next lesson next up we have this differential equation with its accompanying slope field this one's kind of cool I like this one you can see here if you just picked a point anywhere on here you can see that it's going up coming back down like it's kind of coming down here like this and then so it would come up but then it would turn around and then maybe come back down and then back this direction okay so it's doing some weird thing like that so all we're doing now is we're just going to write an equation of a tangent line at this point negative one negative two let me circle it so I don't have a hash mark there but right there at negative one negative two let's figure out what it is so here's the derivative one minus xy that differential equation will let me figure out my slope so I plug in a negative one and a negative two into the x and the y so that gives me one minus two or negative one that's my slope so then I just use the coordinate point y oh wait let's do this first so the slope is a negative one right there get rid of my, my circle so my equation of my line is y plus two equals my slope of negative one times x plus one 
using point slope form with negative one, negative two. So there's my equation of the tangent line. And then that means that line would have a slope of negative one. So it would be looking something like this. And now can you visualize what that would look like? Let's go back to our GeoGebra app. So here's the same graph. I'm gonna put a, make it a little bit more dense so you can see more of it. And then our solution points. So you can see here, if I drag it to negative one, where is that negative one, negative two, right there, boom. And then so now you could visualize the tangent line that we drew on ours. That's how that would match up, right there. That'd be a tangent line. Okay, pretty straightforward. You actually don't even need the slope field for this, but we're do I'm showing you how to do this because often on an AP exam, when they introduce differential equations to a problem, they'll have something like this where you do a tangent line and then there's a slope field going on that you'll have, but we'll do more of that in our next lesson. Okay, last one. Now we are starting with a slope field and we're gonna try and work backwards the other way. So here's our slope field and which one of these matches up? So there's a few strategies for doing this. I like looking for horizontal hash marks and vertical hash marks. This thing doesn't have any vertical hash marks. It gets close, but there are no vertical hash marks. So what that tells me, that's an important thing because if I don't see vertical hash marks, see this one right here? If Y was zero, this derivative does not exist. And I would have something going on at Y equals zero. So all across here, I would have a vertical hash mark, most likely, or else there'd be no hash mark at all. Uh, usually it's a vertical hash mark is what that is. I, I know it's not gonna be this one, but I'll show you why else here in just a second. Also notice, do we have any uh, horizontal? Yes, we do. I've got a horizontal there and there and there and there. So it, it goes on this diagonal line y equals negative x, right? y equals negative x, this horizontal line all the way down here. So what's important is that means that if x and y are opposites, so I'm gonna make a list of numbers that are opposite, one and negative one, negative three and three, or I could say three and negative three. Like those are all just opposites. If they're opposites, then that means you will have a zero slope, a horizontal tangent. So take that knowledge and let's plug in some points. If we plug in an x value of one in here and then y is negative one, this doesn't equal zero. Okay, so it's not that one. Boom, plug in a one here. One squared is one. We want, if you plug in a one negative one, it should be zero. Not that one, that was easy. This one, one plug in a one plus a negative one. Well, that equals zero. That would equal zero. Let's try these others, negative three, three. Negative three plus three is zero. Ooh. Okay, I'm gonna put a little happy face next to this one because I think that's probably the right answer. We've already showed you why here, but if you, again, if you plug in a one and a negative one, one, negative one, that does not equal zero, that equals negative one. So it's not that one. And then natural log of one. Well, if I plug in a one into this, that does give you zero, but what about, let's try a different number, three. Uh, no, not, not that one, this one, three, the y value has to be three. If I do the natural log of three, that is not zero. So yeah, it can't be that one. So you just do some points. Now, sometimes it's not as straightforward as this and you have to use other coordinate points. So you might have to check, all right, well, how about if I do negative two and negative one, that point right there, all the points around it are negative. So it should have a negative slope. So if I do negative two plus a negative one, that equals negative three. Yeah, that would be a steep slope of negative three right there. Okay, this one is our answer, letter C. All right, we've covered everything for this lesson, so rock that mastery check, and I'll see you back in our next lesson where we will do some more on slope fields.